Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 104 of our WWE 2022 save in TW 2020. This is our No Way Out preview. We have seven matches officially set for No Way Out, and we will go through those, some of these quickly. Um, as always, these are shorter episodes, and look, I haven't done a great job of actually adding some of these people to new storylines, so when we look at the storyline heat like we usually do, some of this is just haven't updated, um, in all honesty. Uh, so <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, we're, we're the top company in the world. All my storylines that are currently active uh, in the actual uh, setting there are meeting the storyline heat and all that. So, um, yeah, just haven't done a great job of updating them. I will do that <laughs> after I record this just so everything kind of gets back on track. But let's look at this card. Only seven matches on here, but um, all significant in their own way. Let's start with Asuka and Paige here. This, of course, is uh, the winner. Goes on to WrestleMania to compete for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, we'll see who is the champion heading into that. But it is Asuka and Paige. Um, again, storyline-wise, I know I haven't put it actually into a storyline itself. But what we've been playing up with these two is uh, the fact that they were the final two SmackDown women's stars in the Royal Rumble, uh, which was won by Sasha Banks on the Raw side. So... They're the final two. They're going to go up against each other to see who goes on to WrestleMania uh, and, you know, kind of pushing Asuka's change and sort of the added aggression from her since Survivor Series uh, and also looking at Paige's return uh, from injury, finally getting cleared to return to the ring at the Mae Young Classic and now one step away from competing at WrestleMania for the ultimate prize uh, in her mind, and that is the SmackDown Women's Championship. So, Asuka and Paige, uh, a number one contenders match essentially here with the winner heading to WrestleMania to challenge for the title. All right, this one here, don't worry, I'm not giving this away. Um, Sonya Deville and Shayna Baszler will defend the undisputed Women's Tag Team Championships against Lita and a mystery partner. I put Mandy Rose here, who, as we know, is aligned with Baszler and Deville. Don't worry, uh, we're not doing a swerve. Mandy Rose is not going to be teaming with Lita, but because I don't want you guys to know who the surprise <laughs> opponent or surprise partner is, I couldn't put that on here uh, and kind of book it in that way. So I will just change this once I officially put the partner in uh, to do that. But uh, yeah, so we will have these two defending, which, you know, unfortunately, this should have been Trish and Lita. That was the plan uh, booking wise. But as you guys know, Trish suffered the ruptured spleen. She's out. And so um, I had to adjust not only this match, but also had to adjust something pretty significant I had in store for WrestleMania as well. So we are shifting some things around. Um, and so that's kind of led to where we are. But Baszler and DeVille will defend the championships. They've been our champions, um, go all the way back to SummerSlam now. So they are a very long reigning uh, duo uh, here in terms of the championships. And no one's really been able to beat them. Um, so... Will it be Lita and her mystery partner, which is not Mandy Rose? Uh, we will find out. But, uh, yes, a big tag team match there. And we'll see what happens um, there for the women's tag team titles. All right, continuing the theme here of the women's matches. We do have three here on the card. And as we said a minute ago, the SmackDown women's title will be uh, contested at WrestleMania. But who will it be holding the title? Will it be Bianca Belair? Speaking of SummerSlam, I think she's been our champion. Maybe this entire say Bianca's been our champion, actually. I want to say she may be, um, yeah, you know, outside of Reigns, I suppose, uh, the longest reigning champion in our save to this point. So Bianca's been the champ. This match was supposed to happen at the Royal Rumble, uh, but of course, we remember Raquel got a concussion, and so she was rolled out, couldn't compete at the Rumble, um, and so we had to flip this to no way out here. Um, so Raquel, I mean, going back, I mean, again, I think Survivor Series, Mae Young Classic, We've had several interactions between these two, and that ultimately led to the build to the Rumble, but we're back on track here. Raquel trying to um, really, you know, showing that she can maybe win this thing and, and be able to take that championship off of Bianca Belair um, and head into a WrestleMania match against either Asuka or Paige. So that is our setup here. Raquel has been flexing her strength, and uh, will it be enough to beat Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And then a special um, sort of challenge match here. Kofi Kingston has challenged Brock Lesnar. And actually, we do have, I think, a storyline set for this. We may have had it for some of the others too. But again, as you guys know, I just don't do a great job updating this sometimes. Um, so power versus power. That's our storyline here. Big E, Brock Lesnar. We haven't added Kofi in. We'll do that. 
before. Um, and we've been we've been furthering the storylines even without Kofi added in here. But um, you can see pretty good heat here. Um, really going back to the start of the Royal Rumble, where we know the situation, right? Uh, Lesnar destroyed Kofi at the Rumble. Um, you know, eliminated him, threw him through the table. Big E came in, eliminated Lesnar. Lesnar gets Big E eliminated, and that ultimately led to kind of Kofi remaking his triumphant return um, after Brock tried to go after Xavier Woods. And Kofi basically saying, I know I'm in the new day, but you know what? Um, hey, I, I'm my own man, and I have my own history with Brock Lesnar after he beat me in whatever many seconds it was, uh, you know, for the championship years ago uh, for the WWE title. Um, and so Kofi wanting to kind of get his revenge on his own is basically what he's been pushing here. So Kofi making that very clear. He wants to do this himself. Uh, but we know Big E on the most recent edition of Raw said that he will be at No Way Out uh, to basically make sure that nothing happens to his friend Kofi uh, via Brock Lesnar. So that is your setup for uh, looking at that match, Brock Lesnar and Kofi Kingston and Brock saying once again, he's going to destroy Kofi. All right, then we've got our four-way tag team elimination match for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships. The Lucha Bros, our current champions, um, they will defend against Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest, Bray Wyatt and Aleister Black, and the Viking Raiders. And uh, we've really pushed forward, you know, obviously the talent of the Lucha Bros, what they can do, um, and just everything, you know, that, that has gone on with them to, to get this path to winning the championship. They made their Surprise debuts for us back in September at Unforgiven uh, when they were helping out Edge against Rey Mysterio. Edge had hired them, we had find, found out. Um, but now, you know, they've managed to win the championships uh, and they won it away from Enigma, Jeff Hardy, and Ricochet. And a big defense here um, when they go up against these teams. And we've really been pushing the duo of Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest. Um, you know, they get the main event win on SmackDown over Roman Reigns and Jimmy Uso. They've had their ongoing feud. Drew's been an ongoing feud with Bray Wyatt for forever, um, but so has Damian Priest. He's been involved there, uh, but we've seen Damian kind of step in to help Drew out on many occasions. Um, Drew came up short at the Royal Rumble. Um, all those things kind of leading to this kind of duo here. Um, and as Mick Foley said on SmackDown in the Go Home Edition, um, seems like sort of the ultimate pairing here between these two. <laughs> Foley said reminding him of the Rock and Sock connection. Two guys just kind of coming together at the right time uh, and ultimately perhaps picking up gold in WWE here. So we'll see what happens uh, there. But as we said, Bray Wyatt and Aleister Black up to their usual sinister type ways. Uh, and then you've had the Viking Raiders who, you know, as we said, we're, we've got something planned for the Viking Raiders, but um, they're kind of, um, you know, we wanted to get them into this match to kind of push forward with what we have planned for them. So um, I know you guys are looking at this and it's probably very clear Who's going to have a tough time winning this match of the four teams? But um, still, it will it will serve a purpose, and you'll see what I'm talking about once we actually get to the match. So um, there we go. So that's kind of your setup here. A uh, very fun, and I expect big things from this match uh, with these this group. And again, if we look at the storylines, you know the Drew McIntyre Bray Wyatt stuff's been going on for a long time. Um, but um, yeah, I mean you can see just kind of how far back we go with this. But all of it's been really good uh, for the most part. So like. You know, hey, I mean, we we keep it going, but these two have kind of backed off each other a little bit recently, but they will get back in the ring together um, here in this one. So that is your setup there. We'll go to this one before we talk about the main event. Sami Zayn defending the United States Championship against The Miz and John Cena. Now, as we know, a lot of this has been built around some twists and turns uh, in terms of everything that has kind of gone on with Sami Zayn, the ongoing quest to finish off John Cena, um, Sami has never at any turn, even when John Cena's been away, let anyone forget that at one point he pinned John Cena. And so that's always been uh, the main theme here. And Sami basically coming out saying he's going to finish this with Cena, who made his return at the Royal Rumble, eliminated Sami um, there. So that kind of got us to this point. Uh, but also, we know that Sami pinned The Miz, his best friend, he pinned The Miz in that four-way U.S. title match at the Rumble. Miz wasn't happy, but it seems like Miz has come back around. But we have to remember, The Miz is dealing with an injury. Um, and so, Miz says he'll be ready for this match. Um, Sammy defending, and they seem to be on the same page here heading into this. But we also know that John Cena right here, as we saw on SmackDown, declared he wants to be the United States champion again. This is not just about 
um, you know, his dislike of Sami Zayn or The Miz. This is about becoming the U.S. champion yet again, which was one of the things that sort of helped make his career. So Cena's intentions are very clear. What will happen here in the triple threat match between Sami Zayn, The Miz, and John Cena? Speaking of what will happen, there probably is not a bigger question uh, on any of these other matches other than this one. Roman Reigns will defend the Universal Championship against Jimmy Uso. Uh, that is your main event. And, of course, we have had lots of interesting things happen to get to this point. Um, the Roman Reigns has enemy storylines, been going for a long time. 81 overall heat here. Uh, you know, you can kind of see everyone who's kind of been in the path of Roman Reigns since really the start of our save at this point. Um, you know, Cena was in there back at SummerSlam. So lots of stuff has happened here uh, with Roman Reigns. And, you know, it ultimately led to him giving the reward to Jimmy. Um, and that reward, after Jimmy took out Seth Rollins, that was to give Jimmy Uso a Universal Championship match. And <laughs> just the ultimate strange dynamic here for Roman and then you know leading into it we had Roman sort of push um you know Jimmy Uso into a Claymore from Drew McIntyre that allowed McIntyre and Priest to get that win on SmackDown a couple weeks ago uh but Roman basically saying we all have regrets and you know he regrets pushing Jimmy he knows Jimmy regrets pushing him and frustration after the match but everything's settled because he wants Jimmy to be ready for the biggest opportunity of his life. He's earned this opportunity, according to Roman Reigns. Jimmy has earned this shot to get in the ring with him, but yet Jimmy's been hesitant because he's seen what Roman Reigns has done to The Rock. He's seen what Roman Reigns has done to his own brother. He's seen what Roman Reigns has done to everyone else, and that has led to a lot of hesitation with Jimmy. But now we also have the question of, Jimmy was on the phone with someone on SmackDown the past couple weeks. Roman was on the phone with someone in the final segment of the go-home edition of SmackDown, leading into No Way Out. Who's talking to who? What's going on? What other factors are at play here? We don't know, but we do know it sets up one of our strangest main events that we've had in the series thus far, Roman Reigns defending the Universal Championship against Jimmy Uso. So that is your setup for No Way Out. Seven matches on the card, all, as I said, with some significant uh, meaning in terms of what it will do to push us to WrestleMania. So a lot of fun things on the way. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out everything else on the channel. But on the next episode of our WWE 2022 save, it will be no way out.